Having generated beta maps for this subject, one per condition for each run, we are now ready to run a multivariate pattern analysis using the beta maps as both training and testing data. This is similar to what we did with the first tutorial with AFNI's 3D SVM command, but we will now be using a different package called the decoding toolbox, which can be downloaded from the link down below. Scroll down the page and click on the link, click here to download TDT. Unzip the file when it is finished downloading and move it to your home directory by opening up a terminal and typing move downloads TDT to the current directory, which I've indicated with a dot. Then open a MATLAB terminal, click on set path at the top of the home tab, and then click on add folder with subfolders. Select the directory decoding toolbox within the folder TDT 3.999 within your home folder. Then click open and save and then close. The decoding toolbox contains many template scripts which you can find in the TDT folder decoding toolbox templates. But for now, you will only need to modify one script, decoding underscore template dot M. Open this file by typing open decoding underscore template from the command line, which will display the file in the editor window. Using the editor tab, click on save, save copy as, and save it to the folder Haxby data on your desktop, labeling it Haxby MVPA ROI. Then open this newly saved script from the command line by typing open Haxby MVPA ROI. You will see several fields that need to be either filled in or commented out. The first couple of add path commands, for example, can be used to set the path to the decoding toolbox and SPM if you need to. Since we've already set those paths, we can comment out these lines. On line 17, we have different analysis options that we can choose from. The default searchlight will analyze all the voxels within a mask or the entire brain and determine which voxels are most useful for decoding a particular condition. We will come back to this later. For now, change the string to ROI, which will calculate the decoding accuracy across all of the voxels for each condition within a mask that you provide. Going on, Lines 21 and 24, config results tier and beta location, can both be set to PWD SPM results 1. Remember that this is the same file that contains the output from the preprocessing and the model estimation. On line 31, we will set a path to the mask. The book chapter explains how to create the mask using the methods in the original Haxby paper but we can instead download the masks themselves from this website, which is provided in the more info box down below. Click on the file sub 1 2010.01.14, which will download the original functional and timing data for subject one, as well as the mask used in the original paper. We'll just wait a few more seconds here for it to get downloaded. And when it does, click on it to unzip it and unarchive it. You can see all the different files, including the mask, within sub one. Here we double click on mask4vt.nai.gz to unzip it. This is a ventral temporal mask we'll use for the MVPA analysis. Now go back to a MATLAB terminal, create a directory to store the mask by typing mkdir haxby underscore masks. Then we can move that mask file from the downloads directory to our current Haxby directory mask folder. Use ls to make sure that the mask is where we think it should be. We can set a path to that mask on line 31, configfiles.mask. Again, as before, I'm using a vector to concatenate the present working directory with a path to the file. Beginning on line 36, we can list all of the conditions we have in our experiment. Since there were eight, we will create eight 
label names, one for each condition. I'm copying and pasting it here, which you can find in the more info box down below. When you're done doing that, the modified script so far should look something like this. Line 69 indicates the output that you want from the analysis. The default is accuracy minus chance. A more useful output is a confusion matrix, which shows how accurate the classifier is at identifying each condition correctly. In this case, we will uncomment that line and change it to confusion matrix, using an underscore between the two words. The last line to edit is near the end, which starts with config equals decoding describe data. This contains only two conditions. To expand it to our eight conditions, we will replace it with this line of code, which again, you can find in the more info box down below. The only thing we've really changed here is expanding it from label names one and two all the way up through label name eight and also created a vector containing the numbers one through eight. Now save the file and run it from the terminal by typing Haxby MVPA ROI. This should only take a few moments and you will see the following figures. On the left, the beta maps that are used as both training and testing data using a leave one out cross validation procedure. And on the right, a three dimensional representation of the voxels in the mask that we used. The results are stored in a new variable called results. To see the confusion matrix, type results.confusionmatrix.output and one in curly braces. It should return something like this. You can also represent this as a heat map using the heat map command. This might make it a little bit easier to visualize and more similar to the publication figures that you see. Going from left to right on this figure and from top to bottom, the columns and rows represent the conditions bottle, cat, chair, face, house, scissors, scramble picks, and shoe, the same order as they were entered into the GLM. How should we interpret this? If we look at the number in the upper left corner, we see that it is 58.33%. That means that when the classifier was trained with the beta maps for the bottle condition, it accurately identified other beta maps for the bottle condition, in other words, the testing data, 58.33% of the time. If we look at the square just to the right with a value of 8.33%, that is the amount that bottle beta maps were misidentified as cat beta maps. A perfect classifier would be 100% on all the squares along the diagonal, since every condition would be correctly classified. Note that the highest classification accuracy is for faces and houses, right in the middle. And the lowest accuracy is for scissors, replicating the main findings in the Haxby paper. You can now apply this technique to any mask of your choosing and interpret the results the same way. But if we want to look at whole brain results, we can do so using a searchlight analysis, which we'll cover in the next video.